What's up, Dragon Brood? Today, we're going to be doing something a little different, where we've been playing all these new cards and really stacking stuff up and trying some interesting things. We're going to take a step back to a, even a couple seasons ago and kind of really look and say, what can we do with knights or humans? But in this case, I decided to go with Margie humans and just see what we can add from the new set, if anything, because they're a tribe that got no new, new cards, really. And what can we do with that? Well, I think we have a solution, and it might surprise you. But before we get into that, please remember to like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, because that helps me grow my audience, lets me know what you like, and then lets you know every time I have a video up. Also, don't forget that we have a card spotlight video at the end of the video, so if you just want to hear a story, get tips, sometimes financial advice, who knows what, we cover all kinds of things in the card spotlight. So be sure to check that out at the end. And, you know, a lot of times at the end of the video, I also do a wrap up to let you know kind of what we learned from the games we played and how I would change the deck list. So you know what to expect or some strategy tips. So it's always good to check out the end of the video as well. Anyway, let's go take a look at this Mardu humans list. All right, so this is gonna look largely like you would expect the list to look like when you're talking about either knights or humans, however you choose to play them. But there is a card that stands out in here that really kind of pushed me to want to do this, and it's Rally in the Ranks. Or Rally the Ranks, I should say. And the reason is, it makes your creatures just that much bigger for a cheap cost and it's easy to cast. And it doesn't seem like it's that big a deal, but when you can play 10 or 11 or 12 creature enhancements that just pump your entire team, it really makes your forces formidable when you're talking about having stuff that has Death Touch or First Strike or anything else really makes your creatures a menace or you have creatures with menace, kind of weird how that works, when battling the opponents. So let's take a look at this. At starting at the top, we have four Venerable Knights. Great card. It's a 2-1 one for one. And it's really enough of a nuisance that your opponents have to really decide if they want to kill it early or not or continue to take that damage because this very often is a three or four power creature in this deck. Then Fervent Champ, we have all seen enough of this. We talked about Rally of the Ranks. Worthy Knight. This is the card that's probably the hardest to play in this deck because you have to really decide when can you safely commit to the field, right? A lot of times it's like because you have backup Fervent Champs or whatever, you can get some damage in and make some tokens. Sometimes it's because you can make two, three, four creatures that are plus one, plus one. One of the things too about Rally in the Ranks in this list is with all your creatures being humans, this does allow you as well to go ahead and call human instead of knight, which is a big deal because those tokens you're getting from worthy knight happen to be humans and not knights. So now you can make these tokens that are two twos, three, th three threes, and really start doing a lot of damage. So you're gonna win a lot of games that way. Then Black Lance Paragon, we're maxing out on these because it's kind of a form of removal, especially when you're needing to stop something like a questing beast or punch through a creature maybe with first strike from your fervent champ. It just really does a lot of work in here, and that life gain is not inconsequential either. Dire Tactics, the best removal card we can play. The one problem I will say with Dire Tactics, though, is sometimes you are going to have your lands that don't work out right, and you'll get stuck where you can't play it, and that's going to feel real bad, but the fact that we get to exile things from the graveyard is a very big deal. When you're talking about killing a creature, and maybe eliminating something like a Croxa, or a Skyclave Shade, or any of that stuff that's being played right now, you can really keep your opponent from getting it back and causing you problems later. Then we have a couple of Stormfist Crusaders. This card's really good. I know people say like, ah, but I'm giving my opponent a card. But really, you're getting a card as well, and you have a ton of creatures that are efficient, so you can usually play a couple things per turn. Plus, you're getting a good deal of point of damage. And the fact that it's Menace on top of it. This card's doing a lot for two mana on this list. Then Inspiring Veteran pumps all your knights. Uh, and again, this pumps everything except for the tokens that you're making and down here, General Kudro. Uh, we do have a couple of all the Skyclaves in here. This is kind of like an in-between list from what we started working with in the video. I believe the first couple of games you're going to see have me actually playing with the Emberous Shieldbreaker in this slot, which is a fine card. There's nothing wrong with it. I was just experimenting with something else here. And then, of course, like I said, we have the General Kudro. We're playing three of those. Arguably, you could probably get away with more, but it is legendary, so three is probably all you want to be doing here. And then a couple of Ember Cleaves so we can just clean up, get some damage in, close the games. Lands, we're playing two planes, a swamp, a mountain, 
full set of the 12 pathways, two triomes, four tournament grounds. That's it. Let's go hop into the arena, play some games. Expect oh man, these survive triomes are killing us, y'all. I think I'm gonna, after this, I'm gonna have to take these out of the deck. Uh, keep this. Probably scrap this. Knowing we're gonna have to play that on black. Have this on white, but we'll see. But yeah, I think the issue is, like, you, you're you just gonna lose to random things with this build, I'm pretty sure. Like, it doesn't... I can't... I can just see too many situations where random things will get us killed. Alright, we're gonna attack. Whereas some of the known decks, we might actually do okay against, which is kind of a weird spot to be in. Alright, so they didn't get any of the early cards or proper colors in their hands. They're just going straight up. They're just... They must have the hand that has, like, all of the, uh... Zenith Flares in it already. I guess we'll call it Humans? Alright. We'll try to do it in chunks of six and see if that's enough. I would like to draw another creature, though. At least give me a little bit of backup deck. Just a little bit would be nice. Alright, well the good news is we can exile this thing and it doesn't add one to their graveyard. So, that's cool. But, not getting extra creatures ourselves is really bad here. I mean, the opponent's gonna be able to Zenith Flare, kill our worthy knight, gain four. Okay, they don't have it. Okay. That's good for us. They are going to get it sooner or later, though, if they don't. They have the fourth land already. Alright, another Rescuer. Uh, that's pretty nice. Can we cast both of these? We can do red-white, and we can do white-black. Okay, cool. I appreciate that, because we needed that other human token. Exile this, so we're not adding to the graveyard. Opponent has to block with the token. Go to two. Yep. Uh, okay, so we have two Venerable Knights, a Paragon. Alright, we'll keep this. We'll keep this. This is respectable. So, our play here is just... Play this lady, or duder, or whatever. Whoever person, the squire, getting the sword there to become knighted. And then I think we're just gonna play the other one and put this Triome tapped. Oh, well... That's a problem. That's a real problem. Um. Okay, well, we kind of already dedicated this plan. I guess I would have done this. Wish I would have done that first turn. But I didn't, so here we are. Gotta live with our consequences. I mean, the good news is I do have a removal card. I have Fervent Champ. So, like, whatever they put the counters on, we could kill come after the other one pump our team up next turn that's actually not too bad really uh what do i want to put this on though okay this is a real question so i either have to put it on i get to put it on white or black i think i'm gonna put it on white though because there's a chance we're gonna need that more in coming turns uh we're gonna go ahead and play this duder we're gonna get rid of this one And then we're going to attack for lots many. Now if we can get an untapped land, our team is huge next turn. You have everything plus two, plus two? Oh, that'd be so good. All right, come on, team. Oh, deck, why? Why you do that to me? Why are you this way? Uh... We could also Black Lance Paragon to kill something. All right. I mean, you're gonna have to start blocking one way or the other. Beto ain't gonna drain me for nearly enough. Ooh, opponent's brave. What are they holding on to? I know I'm concerned. How much life are you about to gain that you're willing to go to five? 
Relic vial? Okay. That's fine, I guess. I don't, I don't know what to say about that card. <laughs> Alright, so we can get a 3-3, three, 3-3, three, 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 what's effectively going to be a 2-4-2. Two, two. Yeah, like, they're going to lose their team, right, in the process? I'm not going to mess around playing a Blacklands Paragon here. Uh, doesn't really matter. I guess we'll put it on one of these. Because they're going to have to block that. I mean, they can kill off our Inspired Veteran. And they can block Fervent Champ with Veto. That's kind of their best bet. And even then, they're going to go to one. Wow, that's how they chose to block. Okay. I mean, I don't hate it. It's definitely a benefit to us. All right, I don't know whatever's left in their hand. Could be big time here, I guess. That's what, when you have a creature die? Whenever you gain life, you get plus one, plus one. All right, sure. Uh, we attack. They have to block these two? Sure. I mean, I'm not sure it matters greatly. And you can sacrifice a creature, draw a card. As long as you control a cleric, whenever a creature dies, you gain... Yeah, uh, alright. I guess that's fine. I'm pretty sure the opponent's just dead dead here. Because even if they have a sweeper, we just play a Black Lance Paragon during their instep. And it's going to be a 4-2. Yeah, that's not going to cut it. Yep. Uh, okay. Keep. I mean, we're against Yorian, so we're kind of up against it. The opponent's going first. I wish we were on the play against Yorian, but we're not. So let's just see what happens. Uh, this will go on white. And this is where it gets tough, because, like, Stormfish Crusader is a good card, but I'm not sure how badly I want to play it against Yorian early. So we may just play, like, our Inspiring Veteran, let it take a hit one. Actually, no. Probably won't, actually. Yeah, well, we have to now, because of the way I played these out, but... I I think we just do this. Let's let's see what happens. Because it could just apparition our, our veteran here. Which is very possible. But who knows? Maybe they have more tap lanes. Nope, they just have birth emulators. That's not the worst for us. Alright, let's get some damage in, deck. Damage. Damage. Let's do it. Ooh, that is damage. That qualifies. Now I have to be careful, because they could be playing Storm's Wrath. Though, I can't decide on if people have gone completely in on Doomscar, or if there's still some Storm's Wrath folks out in the world. So, I'm gonna be a wuss and play it safe, and I think this is what we're doing. And then we'll just see. I don't know. There's Banishing Light folks in the world. Alright. That's expected. Come on, Rally the Ranks. That's not a Rally the Ranks. But it's also not terrible. Alright. We'll get in there, I guess, for what we can. Do we just play this? I mean, that's alright. If they have the sweeper, they have the sweeper. We'll just get Doomscarred out of our boots. I'll just get punished for greediness. Because if they don't have it, then cool. I mean, like, I don't, I don't know. 
They didn't instantly sweep us, so I guess we're fine. I've been seeing that in a few lists lately, too. I'm not sure what to make of that. That is a good card to have here. Ooh, that's also a good card to have here. Hold, please. I got some decisions to make. Alright, so this is going to make two... Th it's going to be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Opponent could block four is nine. Yeah, exactly. I'm going like... I'm doing some math here. Like... Alright, I'm going to play this first. Is that people still are like, oh, Tibble's trickery is going to dominate the thing. It needs to be banned. Or this emergent ultimatum is unbeatable. But then, like, you look at the tournament results and they're not saying the same thing. You know, so trying to remind people of that. Uh, this sucks. I kind of have to do this. I, I don't want to, but I sort of have to. I mean, I could have done Worthy Knight into an Inspiring Veteran, but we need to draw lands. So I'm just going to play the Stormfist Crusader and hope for the best. But we're in pretty bad shape with this hand, really. We went first, we mulliganed, we didn't find any one mana things to play, which would have helped. Uh, so now we're kind of up against it a little bit. And that is a dead crusader. Not a surprise. And we'll go for another one, who's also going to die a horrible death. Because the opponent sees we're stuck on land, so I would kill it too. And then we just need to hope to get lucky. I mean, we're getting punished now because we drew another white thing. So I could have went like this, this, this on back-to-back -back turns. Oh, nope, it's just a Ruin Crab. Okay. I say just. I mean, it means we're probably up against uh, rogues. And this is not good because we're giving them extra cards and we're drawing cards. But, you know, situation is what it is. I mean, I guess good news is we got a Dire Tactics? All right. All right, so we sort of need them to tap to kill our our Crusader here. I don't think they will, but we sort of need them to. But I think getting stuck on land for those early couple turns is going to be what does us in. Yep. I think we're going to have a lot of trouble now. Even if it's a white land, I'm not sure if it helps bail us out of trouble here. Oh, we didn't even find that. Like, yeah, we're toast. We 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 can't even cast more than one card a turn there, so we're we're in bad shape. Uh, okay. I mean, it's not a fast hand, but it's a hand. I mean, I think we'll just. Play the Stormfist Crusader with the expectation that it'll die. I mean, I guess I could have, like, end of turn played a Paragon and done something. Or maybe they just want cards. They're willing to risk it. I doubt it, though. If I were the opponent, I would kill it. There you go. There you go. Oh, what's the play here? I think we're going to do this. Not sure why, but I feel like next turn I can play another one. Kind of see what they're up to vibe-wise. Play one of these during their instep, possibly. I mean, they're obviously playing some type of, like, Rogue deck, probably. Well, it's either that or Demir Control, I suppose? But that's not nearly as scary. Now that we have an Ember Cleave, that's a little nice, too. Opponent's gonna flash in something? Alright, we will, too. I do can play that game. This just guarantees I actually get to resolve it. And that's the main reason I did it. So now if the opponent wants to kill something, they kind of are incentivized to leave mana up and not add to their field, which I like. Deliberates. Gonna draw. Scry, then draw. Alright. They bottomed and topped. I'm assuming it was a land. Unless they already had one. Yep. Oh, please attack us. Bring it in for so much damage. 
They're gonna do it. I also like this too because I can just freely put the Black Lands Paragon and or the Embercleave onto the Black Lands Paragon and not have to worry about it as much. All right, here we go. I mean, the Paragon's probably dead next turn, but you know what? It's gonna feel good while it lasts. Thieves Guild Enforcer, sure. All right, opponent's at nine. What can we do now? I need one of our things that pumps our team. That's what we need here. We need... Ah, well, when the opponent's flipping them into the graveyard, that doesn't help our cause any. Now, this is amusing. I'm going to let that resolve. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Because this would take five mana then. Sure. If they just have another kill card, they have another kill card. Keep the new one. All right. Let's see where we are. I mean, they've used three kill cards already and draw, drew some stuff. So, like, I mean, if they just find more, they find more. Right? Like, we can only do so much. They left one up, one down. So, I'm assuming there's another kill card in our future. Yep. Blood Chief's Thirst. Makes sense. Soul Guide Lantern. We don't really care about our yard. That is cute. Doesn't particularly do anything for us, and we can't cast it yet. Uh, okay. We just gotta let the turn go. Man, that's unfortunate. Wrong lands from setting this up, but it may not matter. Okay, they're down to one card. Hopefully it's not a counter. Ooh, it's an Ashiok. Ashiok can return a non-land permanent. Oh, we might have just won, actually. Because the opponent bounces Embercleave. There is little as exquisite okay, they're making a 3-2. So actually, that doesn't allow us to win yet. Alright, so if we get a white land, we could win, right? Because that would be 8. No, that only put the opponent... Oh, that wouldn't kill them either. Dang it. Ah, uh, tough life. Tough life. Well, if we could get a removal card for that, it would be fine too, I suppose. Uh, that's not quite going to do it. So we can make this four. Make it five. That's ten. Oh, yeah, it is. That's exactly enough. Ooh. How about that? That white land showed up just on time. Yep, I'm definitely calling knights. Let's do that. And then we're just going to attack the opponent. Yeah. Woo. Woo, I thought we were dead. Whatever it is, I would I would guess wrong. I'm pretty certain. But we are going to keep this. And we're just going to hope for the best. Need need to find a black land, but you know what? We're going to well, that makes things hurt a little less. Not gonna lie, that does a little bit of work. I'd really like some other two mana thing I could play here. So the following turn. Okay, there you go. That's that's sort of what I'm looking for. So assume the inspiring veteran goes away. Then we can play inspiring veteran fervent champ. 
Good news is, blue-green doesn't have any quality sweepers. It also means the opponent's not playing Apparition. So all we're really worried about is a counter or something here. So this is probably Ultimatum. Yeah, that's what this is. Alright, so they'll have five mana next turn. Ooh, I would like to have access to this at some point. But, can we just blast the opponent for a million damage here? I mean, that's a lot of damage. They play a land. I don't think they have anything for five here. Unless they're just playing... Well, they do play Extinction Events, actually. Okay. Elspeth's Nightmare doesn't kill anything. Yeah, that literally doesn't do anything. We have a bunch of three power stuff. Oh, well, you could have killed something. <laughs> uh, okay. I'll keep... Uh, yeah, I'm going to assume that Embercleave is not going to do anything. This hand's pretty bad, though. If the opponent's going to get us, this is one where the Orion deck, I think, is going to get us. And we're not going to have much say in the matter. Hmm. Alright, that helps somewhat. I guess we do this. What are we playing here? So this is more traditional Yorian build. Alright. I guess I'm prepared to get something countered. Because that's who we are now. Nope. Does not get countered. We're going to attack for three. Man, my problem with the Yorian decks is I... F like, the Yorian decks are good decks. Don't get me wrong. But I just feel like there's a lot of, like... Ignoring what the opponent's doing. Like, either they get it or they don't. And it's just not, like, fun magic for me. It's just very... Blah. Ooh. How much damage can we do? We can... We'll have an Embercleave later. I mean, we can get rid of this so they don't draw a card. Play this, attack for eight. What are they going to do with six mana against us? Eight puts them at seven. With an Embercleave, we could be lethal. All right. I'm game. This is probably a terrible move, but we're in. As I say, in for a penny, in for a pound. There we are. Here comes Sweeper. Yep, I assume that was the case, but I was willing to take a chance on it. Binding of the old guy, sure. Want to destroy that? Sounds good. Alright, opponent. Man, this is not good when we have as much land as the Yorian deck. That's definitely not where we want to be. Uh, please don't have removal? I mean, you didn't have the counter. You obviously have the removal card. Yep, there it is. Uh, yeah, we're just dead. We're not going to come back from that. I'm going to keep this knowing my lands are not cooperating with me. But it's the best we've got at the moment. Okay, that helps. Let's go with this. And then we can play Stormfist Crusader, Inspiring Veteran if we want to. 
because the Crusader taking a bullet first is much better for us. So let's do that. Oh, they don't have anything. Uh-oh. They're playing Snowlands and stuff? You don't even have, like, Frostbite? No Bone Crusher Giant? I'm worried. When my opponents just go through all that and then don't do anything, I'm just like, what? What do we even do? I don't know what life is anymore. Um. I mean, I assume we're going to lose our board next turn then? But, I mean, do we just... We can't just not play anything, right? I mean, I, I guess we just get Storm's Wrath. I mean, if we do, we do. If we die, we die. We'll just queue up another game here in a couple seconds. Iron Crag Feet. Okay. Emancipation. All right. Well, those are things I didn't think was going to happen. Can we kill the opponents? Three... Four, five, so that's ten. Yeah, yeah, we totally can. All right. All right, just put that there. Juice that one with the Ember Cleave. All right. That was not how I thought this game was going to go down, but okay. Ah, so I'm a little torn here, right? The deck performed very well. It, uh... I think during that session, I went from the very bottom of like platinum four up to, or a diamond four up to diamond two, I think is where we were. The thing I'm getting at is that it overperformed for sure. The questions I have is like, we ended up going from the shield breaker to the mall of the sky claves, ultimately deciding that I'm not sure where I sit on that slot. Those are two slots that honestly, I would be happy with those if they were like an additional rally the ranks i'd also be happy with the card if it was like two murderous riders the only thing i will say is if you play murderous rider i would cut one tournament grounds and play an additional swamp that's probably one thing i would do there to fix that up a little bit just to make sure you can play the spell side of it a little bit easier but otherwise if you already have this deck you really only added seven cards i think we added four of the new pathways and three uh rally the rank right but maybe you want to go to a fourth rally the ranks and call it good but the deck overall is pretty solid uh just again those two slots be what you what what you want them to be right it could be another ember cleave and a rally the ranks it could be maybe like we said murderous riders whatever you want but it actually performed very well so yeah i have to admit i was very surprised i was not expecting this we could have got a little lucky it feels like it overperformed, but even then even if you take four or five wins off that that's still acceptable to play uh just got to be careful with how you lead your cards out there and you know how you decide to walk into sweepers as for our card spotlight though we're gonna talk about isolated chapel more importantly all of the check lands from dominaria because as it turns out and i guess from innistrad as well these are actually starting to pick up in value right now I, they actually really started probably about six months ago so you might be a little late to the party but if you have some and you have extras you've been sitting on because you thought nobody's ever going to want these. Well, people do want them right now, and you can probably get a little bit on a few buy lists. So, recommend checking that out if you need a few bucks. And as always, don't forget the deck list will be in the description down below, where you can also get links to my Facebook and Twitch streams, which I have going us about every day, so come check us out. I also have links to my Discord, where we have over 300 people in there chatting about all types of things strategically placed within the magic environment. I don't know, that sentence doesn't make a lot of sense. But people are talking magic over in the Discord. Come say hi, it's open to everybody. And don't forget if you're shopping on TCG Player or Amazon, if you click one of the links in the description below, even if you don't buy the item that's linked, as long as you shop within 24 hours, I'll get a small kickback and it at least helps me out somewhat, and you don't have to spend any more money than you were already planning to spend. And finally, remember, if you haven't, please like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell just one more time, help me out. I'll be super appreciative. I really am, every time I get a notification that somebody subscribed. But that's all I have for you for now. We'll see you next time.